Hey, what's up guys? So I just left a really good talk that was talking about AI and specifically the differences between traditional software and what AI is capable of doing. And I've been trying to wrap my head around this for quite a while. Like we have radar detectors, we have dash cams that have your traditional software algorithms that are controlling them, telling them how to function. How do you filter out false alerts on radar detectors? How do you optimize the video quality on a dash cam? But something that I've actually really struggled with for a while is like, I see in the comments, you know, all the time people are like, oh, just throw AI at it and it'll make it better. And something I see at CES, something I see at all the different conventions, something we see on the manufacturer's websites is they're all, they're advertising AI. Everybody's saying AI, but like, not only what is it capable of, but how fundamentally is AI different than what we've already had for many, many years? Like, and I just came actually back from a talk, uh, a James Whitaker talk. Love listening to the guy. Look him up sometime if you're curious, by the way. Um, but he gave a really good talk, and this one was specifically talking about the differences between your traditional software algorithms and what AI is doing. And there were a couple really good examples that I just, we were driving home now, I just wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about some of the differences between uh, what traditionally software is capable of versus what AI is now actually doing for us. So fundamentally, when it comes to traditional software, what it basically is is a programmer a developer they're writing a set of instructions that a computer has to follow right if this then that if you have a radar detector with GPS lockouts for example GPS lockouts fundamentally are saying if I see this signal in a certain location after a certain amount of times filter it out it's a known stationary false alert right okay so what are the parameters I have a GPS radius if I see a signal within this location if I see it after a certain amount of hours um, okay, maybe lock it out. Or what about the frequency of the signal? It has to be the same frequency. So I also need to consider, okay, the frequency is within this certain range. Awesome. Okay, so GPS lockouts, filter out a false alert if it's in a certain location, it's a certain frequency range. I pass it a certain amount of times after a certain amount of time. You basically have certain parameters that if you meet this criteria, this is a false alert, I want to filter it out. It's different than a police officer, which will have different locations as they're driving around they're not always in the same location the way a, a street sign or a door opener is, right and with gps lockouts it's a programmer it's a developer who's writing a, an algorithm that has to meet a certain set of conditions and they have some control over how big is that gps radius how much can the frequency change over time should i actually monitor for gps or for temperature changes over time which can lead to frequency drift like you can make this algorithm a little bit more sophisticated and more advanced but fundamentally you have a person who's actually creating an algorithm that has to tell a computer here are the instructions for you to follow and then the dash cam or the radar detector or whatever tech thing you've got has to follow these instructions and if this situation meets certain criteria you do that right now AI is fundamentally different you're not programming if you see this then do that the computer has to figure that out and I know this is not a, a new idea. I've talked to Redenso about this when I met up with them earlier on in like the Thea development process. Uh, and this is what a lot of like machine learning it's based on. It's the idea is you're giving the computer a lot of information and just saying, you figure it out. I'm not going to tell you if this criteria is met, then you're going to do that. And there's a couple of really good examples of this. Now, the first example would be something like, uh, again, this is straight from James Whitaker's talk, so full credit to him, but like the idea is let's say you come and you're learning to drive, right? You come to a four-way stop. Now the rules at a four-way stop are, well, if you come to a four-way stop, if you're the first person there, you get to go ahead and drive. Now what happens if somebody comes up after you, but they're like, man, I'm just gonna blow through the stop sign and I'm gonna drive. You better stop so that you don't actually wind up getting in a crash here, right? So you have the traditional rules, but you have to kind of figure this out as you go, right? Like a person who's driving, they just sit down and they sort of figure it out. Like, here's what the rules are, but sometimes things work differently. I gotta account for that. Now, I know with programming, you can have some edge cases and stuff, but nevertheless, the idea here is you can have your rules, but there's gonna be other conditions as well that can make this more complicated and more complex. Uh, now, another really good example was actually the first case where AI was really was, uh, actively utilized, which I didn't actually know before this was actually used for predicting the weather. Um, earlier on, I think it was like the 1960s or so, they actually started implementing computers to try to figure out the weather, for predicting the weather on TV and stuff. Now, um, people could already do this before, but AI wound up being more accurate. And the idea here is like, 
let's say you're trying to predict the forecast, right? Predict the weather. And you say, here's the weather yesterday in Idaho. Here's the weather in New York. Here's the weather in Timbuktu. Here's all the information that we know. What's the weather going to be in Kentucky? Well, a person can kind of try to figure that out. But when you start having a ton of data, a ton of information, that's way too much information from like for any one person to figure out. If you're like trying to figure out all the patterns from what has the weather been like everywhere around the world yesterday or even just here in this country or even just this region of the country, there's a lot of information. What was it like yesterday? What was it like the day before? The computer can just look at all this kind of stuff and then it can start to figure out and recognize different patterns that may not be apparent to a person. So it can actually start to figure this stuff out above and beyond a person saying, well, if you see A, B, and C, then the answer is going to be D. The computer is able to take in all this information and figure out new answers that a person doesn't have to tell it how to figure out those answers. See, that this is a different approach than like the person saying, well, if these conditions are met, then you do that. Uh, another good example was chess, <laughs> right? Um, chess is one of those games that like computers have been learning how to play. Can you beat the masters? Can you beat the grandmasters? Can you beat Gary Kasparov? You know? What they were finding is like over time, computers were actually getting really good at playing chess, and it wasn't people were having to like teach it. You know, if you see the rook go here or the knight or the queen go there, then you do this in response. It's, it just watches a bunch of games. You feed it a bunch of data. And then it can figure out, well, I've seen a ton of games. I've seen a bunch of stuff that works. I've seen a bunch of stuff that doesn't work. I've tried a lot of things in my own training process. I've kind of seen over time that if I do this, I tend to lose. But if I do that, I tend to win. And just playing millions and billions of different games over and over and seeing a bunch of information on how other people have been playing, it learns on its own what are good moves. How do you play well? How do you win a chess game? And it's gotten to the point now where, like, can basically be any person. Like they've gotten to the point now where some of these computers, like Dean Watson that just found out, are coming up with new moves that no human has ever come up with because it's figuring out all these different ideas and possibilities that just it wasn't programmed to do. It's kind of figuring it out on its own. Like this is just incredible, incredible stuff. The idea of it can take a bunch of information that you feed it and it can kind of figure out what's a good answer, what's a bad answer. I can see the dash cam was just kind of changing. I think the, the card behind me was uh, triggering the ambient light sensor here and switching from like color to <laughs> black and white mode. I can hear the IR filter kind of got it off there. But either way, the idea with the computer is like it's not following preset algorithms on what do you do in this situation or that situation. It is learning on its own what's good and bad, what how to do things. It's not being taught by a person. It just goes out and it figures it out on its own. And this is a fundamental difference than an algorithm where you tell it, if you see these criteria, you do this. Oh, here's an edge case. Okay, maybe if you see that, it's kind of rare, but it could happen, you do that. It figures all this stuff out on its own. And this is a big fundamental difference. Coming back to radar detectors, for example, of like a lot of our stuff on the radar detector side, it's fairly simplistic. Traffic sensor rejection. If you see a signal that's longer than half a second in duration or whatever you want to set that limit to. Okay, maybe alert. But if it's shorter, you want to filter it out or whatever. Like uh, GPS lockouts, very simple algorithm, at least the basics of it. If it's within this location, within this time frame, within this certain frequency range, I want to filter it out. Otherwise, alert. K blocks and K notches, a stupid, dumb band aid of a filter <laughs> until we figure out more sophisticated false alert filtering that says, if I see a signal that's within this certain frequency range, if it's maybe the signal strength, I'll filter it out. I'll mute it, I'll not alert you, whatever. But like, it's a filter that just says, I'm going to block signals with this strength and this frequency range. It can be effective, it's very simple, it is not AI. GPS lockouts are not fundamentally AI using machine learning. It's still a person who's developing an algorithm. And this is something that uh, in my discussion with Redenso years ago when Theo was much more early in its development process, I mean, they announced it in, what, 2018, 2019, it's now 2025. I, I, hope they I hope somebody comes out with a radar detector with AI that fundamentally changes the game on how they analyze signals, how they look at signals, and then that how they can determine, is it a false alert? Is it a door opener? What 
Is it a police radar gun? Is it a speed sign? What brand is it? Is it a blind spot false? You know, is it coming towards me or away? It can just look at the signals and it itself, it has the sophisticated capability of actually looking at the signal. Does it have enough resolution to look at the signal and see all the other aspects of a signal that's more than just the strength or the frequency or maybe even the modulation? Like, to what extent can it look at a signal and then it itself can start to determine what is the source of that signal and thus should I alert the user or not? A much more sophisticated level of signal analysis, which has been the hope for Redenso Thea for many years. This is not a Thea video. I don't. I hope Thea comes out one day. I hope somebody, somebody comes out with a detector with AI. I know there's a lot of patents and legal restrictions that companies could implement and all that. I get it, but like, just on the technology side, I would love to see somebody come out with a detector that can just look at a signal and tell the difference between what these different signals are. That's kind of the holy grail. So we don't have to rely on GPS lockouts, on key notches and key blocks and low speed muting and all the kind of simplistic and dumb and basic filters that we're kind of using now. I know some companies have been trying to work on this now when it comes to blind spot filtering and maybe looking at the modulation schemes and stuff to figure out blind spot filtering and doing some sophisticated signal analysis that's more sophisticated than what we traditionally seen over the years. But nevertheless, I think that's going to be the big development on the radar detector side specifically. It's the same stuff that we've seen with AI in general and the difference between AI and all the other traditional software algorithms that people have been playing with over the years is just that the device can figure it out on its own. It can be trained to say, here's the information, here's the right answer, you figure it out. Oh, oh another good example of this that I forgot to mention was fingerprint analysis. Like, let's say uh, you feed it a bunch of different fingerprints. Again, this is an example from James, but like, you give it a bunch of fingerprints of like these different people and you say, you know, this is your thumbprint or this is this person's pinky or this one has a little bit of a smudge in it. You kind of train it on what all the information is. You don't tell it how to give it the right, how to get the right answer. It has to figure it out on its own. But you say, here's the input data. Here's the correct answers. You figure it out. You figure out the best way to figure it out. And then later on, it can say, oh, this is the thumb of so-and-so. This is the pinky of that person. Not because you've told it how to do that, but because it's figured out a way to recognize certain patterns to solve certain problems on its own. And this, again, I know it's not a new concept. This stuff has been out for a while now, but I've been trying to figure out a way of like, how do I understand it? How do I wrap my head around it? How do I explain it somewhat simply? But again, it's the difference between a person coming up with an algorithm to say, if you see this, then do that, versus a computer using machine learning and neural networks to say like, okay, I have my own way now to say if this, then that, but I'm gonna come up with my own solution that a person may or may not understand how do you get to that answer, but I'm gonna come up with a solution myself so that nobody has to teach me how to do it. I can figure it out on my own. And that is the big takeaway here from what I've seen with AI, with machine learning, it's the computers figuring it out themselves. And obviously the way that you do this is pretty complex, right? But that's the main takeaway. And I've seen a lot of companies saying, oh yeah, we're doing AI, but like, I know there's simpler implementations of it, but fundamentally what I see is like the big revolutionary change is there doesn't have to be an engineer, a developer, a programmer who says, if you see a signal that meets certain criteria, it's a real alert versus it's a false alert. The radar detector or insert whatever tech thing you want, the radar detector can figure it out on its own it can it can do a better job than what any person can hope to do by developing their own algorithm on their own and that is really when i look at a radar detector do you have ai like are you doing that that's what i'm looking for is like the next level of development of processing of analysis compared to what we've already had with all of our other radar detectors that are already available on the market. So like fundamentally that, and this is I think the first time I have like with some of these other examples, a good idea in my head of what AI is specifically on a radar detector and how it can help make a difference compared to what we have already been experiencing for however many decades up to this point. And so 
anyways, yeah, I'm super pumped about this. I'm excited. I just kind of wanted to, well, I am sitting down. I wanted to sit down and, like, take the time to kind of go over this as I'm processing all the stuff in my head. So, anyways, yeah, that's it for now. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know kind of what you've been seeing with AI specifically. This is something I find super interesting. So if you've been seeing other things, if you have some additional thoughts, if you want to go into more detail uh, above and beyond kind of the fundamentals that I've been covering kind of here in this video, please let me know. I'd love to learn about this more. I'd love to talk about this more. I'd love to share more as I'm figuring this out too. So anyways, that's finally the first time I've had a chance to like really get my thoughts down together well on the differences between radar detectors with their traditional signal analysis and false alert filtering versus what we can expect maybe moving forward with AI. Much more sophisticated signal analysis, much more accurate classification of different signals. I know Redenso, again, for many years, they're the only ones that I've seen that have really been doing this. They were able to classify different police radar guns based on the signals and kind of the patterns that they've been seeing without having to say like, oh yeah, if you see this, this, and this, that's an MPHB3, or that is a Falcon HR. Like, it can figure it out on its own. And I have no idea when or if Thea will ever come out or if another company will do it. It's just, it's not about a brand thing. It's just the technology in general. And that's, I think, what interests me most. So, anyways, that's it for now. Hopefully this is as interesting for you guys, or at least partially, <laughs> as it is for me. But, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing awesome, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.